Hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about our official March of 2021 forecast. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do think weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. And I'd also highly recommend that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below, and then also our very awesome channel membership, which you can check out by clicking that button next to the subscribe button. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I want to know how do you hope that this upcoming March goes? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now let's get straight into this video, and first things first, we're taking a look at that precipitation forecast. And we're talking about a little bit of that slightly above normal precipitation, and you can see that this looks a lot like our spring forecast, because this is actually one-third of our spring forecast. March, April, May is what is our meteorological spring, so March is one-third of that. As you can see, there is resemblance, and it makes sense. So we see that most of that storm track is going to enter in through the Pacific Northwest and then dive down into the Ohio Valley a little bit, and that's overall how I expect most of this spring season to go as well. So let's show you one of those moderately above-average precipitation regions, and as you can see, for Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Illinois, Iowa, Indiana, and Ohio, we are expecting most of these regions to see a moderately above-average precipitation throughout the month of March. Uh, and really, this is just an above-average chance at precipitation, because obviously some areas in here will see, you know, very strong, potent thunderstorms that will bring well above-average precipitation, and then some areas will just miss those, especially in these spring and summer months. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to show you one more moderately above average precipitation region, and then we're going to move on and talk a little bit about that below average precipitation as well. So here we are talking about that other moderately above average precipitation region, and this one's for Oregon and Washington. We do expect the continuation of storms moving onshore through the Pacific Northwest, very typical of La Nina, which we are in. So that's just going to lead to more and more storminess for those regions. Also, the Northern Rockies could have a really big snow season uh, this spring, which is kind of like the second snow season they have. Usually, you know, September, October, November is a big one, and then March, April, May as well can bring a lot of snow for those Rocky Mountain regions. So you can get the general gist of where I expect the storm track to mostly go in through the Pacific Northwest and then down through the Ohio Valley. Oftentimes a trough will be around uh, through the middle of the United States and that will lead to some severe weather as well might I, might I add. Uh, but we'll talk a little bit about that later on because towards the end of this video, we're going to go over that severe weather forecast for March and then also the overall forecast for March, which will tell a lot of the story for you guys. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to talk about that below average precipitation and then that temperature forecast. And then we're going to talk about the severe weather and overall forecast as well. All of that is coming up in just a moment. All right, now here's that below average precipitation region, and this is a big one, and it's most of the southern United States. This is another thing that's just very, very typical in a La Nina. It's the opposite in an El Nino, so in an El Nino, usually the northern United States doesn't get nearly as much precipitation, and then the southern United States gets a very active storm track, including California uh, and most La, or sorry, El Ninos as well. So for California, Nevada, and through the four corner states and through Oklahoma, Texas, and even the Gulf states in the southeast, we're all expecting some slightly below average precipitation. Now remember, I'm going to say this again. If you get a large thunderstorm that drops, you know, a significant amount of rainfall, which does happen with some thunderstorms, especially for areas in the Gulf states, they're going to start to see them as we warm up a little bit. You could get many inches of rain that just puts you above your average rainfall with one little thunderstorm, but one county over might not get any rainfall from that. So it is going to vary a ton. It's going to vary a ton, and this won't be true for every single spot. But overall, for the most part, most of these regions will stay true to what I'm forecasting here. Here's our moderately below average precipitation region. And as you can see for Nevada, uh, Cal California there, also the four corner states and in through Texas, we expect moderately below average precipitation. And this is just an area where that precipitation is going to go right around you guys. It's going to enter in through the Pacific Northwest and then dive down through the plains, kind of leaving you guys out in the dry, literally. So that's how I expect things to go. Now let's get a little bit into that temperature forecast here. And as you can see, we're expecting 
slightly below normal temperatures there, especially for the northwest, but also the north central United States a little bit could get in on some of those moderately below or sorry, slightly below average temperatures there for many of these regions, especially up there for again, the north central and the northwestern United States. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and talk about the moderately below average temperatures and then the above average temperatures as well in just a moment. All right, now here we are taking a look at that moderately below average temperature region. And as you can see for the Pacific Northwest and through the Northern Rockies and even the Northern Plains there, we're all expecting to have some moderately below average temperatures throughout the month of March. All right, now let's take a little bit of a look into those above average temperature regions. And as you can see for a lot of the four corner states and through the South Central and then mostly the East Coast, we're expecting above average temperatures. Uh, we've been seeing this pattern kind of already set in for about the past week or so. You might have noticed that if you live in these regions that it has been quite warm. It's been a little bit of an early start to spring. I think that's going to scale back a little bit. We've had a very extreme uh, version of that, but I think we're going to have some slightly you know, flip-flop patterns around, especially for the northeastern United States, where there will be cool down, then warm up, then cool down, then warm up. It might go back and forth quite a bit, but overall, this pattern will be the general uh, gist as we look back. Now, we even have a moderately above average temperature region as well, and that's going to be for mostly Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, the Gulf states, and then a lot of the southeast as well. And this is mostly the region where we just expect really for that warm air to just stick around. The cold air isn't going to make its way into this region very much. This region will stay mostly undisturbed by the cold air, and we will mostly be taking a look at above average temperatures throughout most of the month for the month of March of 2021. I hope that makes sense because I know it can get kind of confusing when we're just talking about compared to normal type stuff, uh, but I've been making these monthly forecasts pretty consistently. I think the last one I missed was maybe like November of 2018 or something like that. So we've been making these pretty consistently. So I know a lot of you are mostly familiar with this, but we have been getting a lot of new viewers lately. So I just want to make sure everybody's filled in on how we do things here. All right, now what we're going to do here is we are going to move on and we're going to be taking a look at that severe weather forecast for March of 2021 and then also that exciting overall forecast for March of 2021 as well. All of those things will be coming up in just a moment. All right, now here we are taking a look at the severe weather forecast for March of 2021. And as you can see, it great, greatly resembles that spring forecast for 2021 as well. Obviously, I've mentioned why, because this is one third of that spring forecast. So there would be a huge problem if this didn't resemble that. That would mean that my spring forecast probably isn't looking to go as I originally anticipated. But at this point, we still do feel very good about that spring forecast. And that's why March really resembles that. We, we expect that mostly a lot of the southern base severe weather will happen this month uh, for March. We expect that a lot of areas like Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Tennessee especially could get started. Even the Gulf states, I expect them to get an average amount of severe weather uh, in even Texas and Louisiana as well. Uh, but mostly those areas in Kansas, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, Arkansas, and Oklahoma there that we have shaded in the red especially is where we anticipate an above average amount of severe weather based on our temperature forecast. Where that cold and the warm air masses interact and basically in between that is where we expect the most severe weather as long as there's above average precipitation as well, which in this case there is. So all of those things look to come together. If there's any inaccuracies with our temperature or precipitation forecast, that will greatly shift this severe weather forecast. So take this with a grain of salt because any change in any of those things, which there likely will be some changes, is going to change this forecast as well. Whether that's a small change or a large change, we will only know once it's already happened. But I'm just giving you that warning and a heads up. That's our best guess at this point, though. Anyway, for our overall forecast here, we're going to start out with the Pacific Northwest. That's where we expect cool and wet conditions. Again, that's like the same exact thing we had for the spring forecast because, again, this pretty much is a lot of the spring. Typical snow there for the white region, so for the Rockies mostly. They do see a lot of snow, like I said, for the months of March and April especially. So we expect a typical amount of that to be going on with the above average and near normal precipitation those areas will be seeing. Dry and warmer for the southwest, again, very typical in a La Nina. Nothing surprising there at all. In that orange region for the south central United States, warmer than normal is really the biggest keynote I have for that region. Uh, it's going to be quite warm. You guys are going to see an early spring. It's going to be a really nice thaw from what you guys just had, especially in Texas uh, and Oklahoma, especially for the month of February. We saw extreme cold for you guys, some of the most historic cold you guys have ever seen. So to have a little bit of an early start to that warmth is going to be really, really nice. 
However, to the north of you, speaking of things that aren't very, very nice, we have severe weather outbreaks possible within this red region. That is where we expect the most above average severe weather to occur, as you saw just now on our severe weather forecast for the month of March. Up to the north, some Arctic air will make its way in. Also some very warm air, but also some Arctic air, as I've stated there. For the southeast, spring arrives. You guys will be seeing spring arrive during the month of March. That darker green area to your north, they won't quite see spring arrive fully in the month of March. We will have to wait for April. I live in this region. I'm very ready for spring and summer. I don't know about you guys. Let me know in the comments if you're ready for spring as well. I'm just ready for the warmer weather. I can't wait to get out there, go fishing, go to the beach, things like that. So I'm, I'm totally ready for it. Uh, but we're going to have to wait one more month, I think, in that dark green region. And then last but not least, for portions of the Ohio Valley, mostly just Ohio itself, and then the Northeast, we're expecting a flip-flop pattern. And what I mean by that is some colder air will make its way in at times, some warmer air will make its way in at times, uh, and then some above-average precipitation and some below-average precipitation at times. But generally, it's going to be flipping all over the place back and forth, and it's going to be a big transition month for you guys up there in the Northeast. Anyways, for our confidence tab, we're at about a 4 out of 6, and this is pretty typical for a monthly forecast. We don't expect to be too confident in these because it is a longer range forecast, but 4 is about the maximum you can have in a situation like this. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, how many more slight risk days do you think we will be seeing um, during the next week or so? And RT said 2. Very straightforward. I think that's a fair guess. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Sebastian Tao, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovi Nagel, Alan Palamo, Adam S., Larry LePan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Aiden Mattis, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Sherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manhart, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Mark J., Luke Falego, Garys, and John Quilisi. If you would like to be a part of this patron on screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.